this is a Beetle Tamer electric blanket which I'm setting up for use in a van. There are about 40 watts at piece, drawing about 3.5 to 4, uh, not, no, not. It's going to be 3.5 amps at 12 ish volts. Uh, and uh, they come with uh, these uh, cigarette lighter plugs, which are absolutely normal, uh, but they are fused with 10 amps. And uh, if I use these cigarette lighter plugs as they come, they get hot at 3.5 amps. So I wouldn't even want to imagine 10 amps going through this. This is just some like non-copper, not very well conducting uh, metal cap they put on the end of the connector. And this is just nowhere near good enough to carry 10 amps, I would not say. And well, in general, the cigarette lighter connector isn't good enough for 10 amps. But uh, moving on from that, I'm wiring them up uh, for for use with uh, a switch because they don't come with a switch uh, from the factory and these are not your normal uh, switches. These are some really weird uh, Chinese eBay uh, light switches which, uh, you know, they look like any other inline switch on the surface, but uh, there are a couple of weird things about them. Uh, most notably, they do not have any strain relief. At all, there's nothing. I'm guessing you just uh, are supposed to wrap a wire around that to kind of give it something. But yeah, I'm thinking the engineer just figured out ah, it'll, it'll be anchored by the electrical connections. It'll be fine. Now the other weird thing is these are rated for 10 amps, and uh, knock on wood, you don't want to run 10 amps through anything uh, Chinese rated. So, but look at the. Uh, breaking action on this thing, if I can find it. If we have a real close look there, you have this giant copper switch there. Just look at the distance it opens. That's like five, six millimeters of clearance, which is just silly. I mean, if, even properly rated main switches do not have that much gap in them when they open. And then to contrast that, uh, the connection of the other end is just a copper piece sliding along there, making probably not a very good connection at all. And uh, to round the electrical insecurity off, uh, look at how close this uh, uh, supposedly main terminal is to the case. That is like a millimeter, less than one millimeter away from your skin so if uh, this thing were used to, and uh, at all moist, uh, you could, you would and you grabbed it like so, with a case on, you would get a probably qu rather considerable tingle. Uh, but uh, for 12 volts, they're pretty much excellent. They have a giant breaker, and uh, I built to handle a fair amount of current. So uh, main rated nape, excellent for my uses. Oh, there we go. Switchable electric blanket. And to make a point out of how poor this uh, cigarette lighter connector is, uh, this uh, blanket would never draw more than 3.35 amps. That was the highest current I got it to draw uh, with the original connector. Uh, but now, going not only through my long test leads, clamped onto a DC plug, going through about 2 meters of 28W 20 gauge. A DC plug wire is drawing about the same amount of current. So all that stuff has a combined resistance comparable to this connector. That's awful. And here's one of the blankets uh, installed. And the idea is that uh, this goes uh, below all the bed sheets and just gives me a very comfortable warm bed. I'm going with these uh, warm blankets as my primary means of uh, heating this year, uh, that way I won't have to bring uh, one of those giant warm space heaters. Uh, so I've got uh, one blanket installed, one spare which I just set up, so even if this breaks, which I'm suspecting it might, since these are probably not intended to be uh, used, well, more than a couple of times without breaking, to be honest, they're just filled with uh, heating wire going back and forth. and. This with me sleeping on it is going to be rather mangled over time. I'm just hoping it won't catch fire, but uh, I'm thinking I'm going to try and turn it off before I go to bed because else I'm going to cook anyway. 
So there's that. Uh, I've been hard at work uh, today, otherwise preparing for takeoff. Uh, most notably, I have uh, improved upon my uh, cover this year. So this is uh, a small cheap tarp, which is just uh, zip tied to uh, a roll of uh, electrical tubing, the kind of stuff you dig down uh, underground. And the idea is you can just unroll this. It's just here during transit. You do that, undo this, undo this, and you just roll yourself some cover. I do have these giant holes on the side due to width constraints, but that's no, no big deal. And this just hangs there pretty much. It's a bit rickety if it's really windy, it kind of wants to move around due to the fact that it's actually not wide enough to like properly lie outside there, but I haven't tried this. Let's just put that there and go over there and oh yeah. That'll kind of Oh yeah. Nah. Nah, it's, it's just not going to for very well. If I really need to, I can just take some bungee cords and tie this to the windshield wipers, which are on the other side of there. And uh, I have improved upon the insulation, which I have intended to do for a very long time. So, I've done both the window valve, put just an extra layer of uh, reflective stuff. It's also the kind of thicker stuff which has the... Uh, Let's see if I've got the piece. The stuff which has the uh, hollow foam backing. So this actually does trap some air and if I hold it like this it's not transmitting temperature very well at all. If I do that this still feels warm to the touch even though it's rather cold outside and the vehicle metal is very cold indeed. So on this side I've just taken two layers of this stuff and it's uh, firmly taped uh, rather tightly. You can see how it's just like a balloon pretty much when I press on it and uh, this should seal very well around the window. Uh, on the other side however, uh, this since it's not right behind the bed uh, is still attached with magnets so I can just uh, get rid of that and have a window and shove this somewhere with my amazing handwork down there for covering up the uh, braking light. There's a couple of magnets, uh, fridge door magnets in that uh, row of tape there, so that just magnets onto the metal uh, below the uh, braking light. Making a pretty good seal and it's relatively easy to install. Uh, might not be able to do it one hand unless I get those magnets to grab. Nope. There's this. Not, not intended to be installed one handed. Well, there we go. That's on. That's there. God damn it! This is a lot easier to do without holding the camera. There we go. Yeah, normally that takes like three seconds to install. I just have to make sure that all the rather weak ferrous magnets around the edge grab. This isn't a hundred percent. Uh, sealing it's gonna have some like leakage around the edges like here where it's I can't get any magnets like in that weird angle there or can I get any magnets there in an other corner really but uh, this is gonna do a much better job than the old one which was literally just a piece of uh, aluminium foil basically so this is a big step up stay in place damn you Yeah, I need to put that properly in place once I've got my hands free. And uh, that window over there, there also, so to speak, opens. It is uh, only magneted in place if I can force my way in here. It's full of shit at the moment. So this should just come off like so. And we've got ourselves a window. Nothing to it. You can see the construction is I have my original film here which is just a real thin film and then I've duct taped some of this uh, foamy stuff on the back side of it and while it's 
uh, hardly much. It is a lot better than what I've had thus far. And that one again is not going on there nicely one-handed, so we'll leave that open for the time being. Sit there. Uh, and over here I have installed my uh, the Sony XS1 speakers, which are uh, providing a very high fidelity audio compared to what I've had in the past in here. And they are rather nice since they are angled down. Uh, not only do they project the sound down towards me, uh, but uh, there's... Uh, I've, uh, with the old speakers I kept hitting my head on this corner, which was very sharp, and that is nowhere near as big of an issue with these speakers. And this year I've put my fire alarm up there in the ceiling. Previously it was under the bed, which wasn't particularly ideal. And mostly I've moved it because uh, this blanket would be above the fire alarm if uh, I had it under the bed. Uh, last year, since all the electronics were indeed uh, also under the bed, it wasn't a huge deal having the fire alarm right by the thing that's likely to catch fire, but yeah, this is huge risk since there's a uh, risk of me falling asleep on it. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I've been up to. Oh yeah, I have installed uh, this. Uh, this is uh, a part of an IKEA scoop rack, which is like this soft plastic, uh, like very flimsy uh, thing. They come with this rack which you're supposed to hang in your cupboard and like put clothes and stuff in. But uh, I've just uh, screwed this uh, down onto the wood and it's going to be keeping like my breakfast and ketchup and like little daily use stuff which uh, isn't really too critical if they go flying. <sighs> and that's about it. I've packed some food, went to a supermarket so I've got like a few days worth of rations there. Mostly canned stuff and noodles, a couple of boxes of rice. <sighs> and we've got a properly mounted fire extinguisher. I think that just about covers what I've been doing recently. And that's how this looks from the outside. So the way I've mounted this stuff up here is very easy. I've drilled a hole there and just zip tied it there. And there are, that's zip tied, there's a zip tie in the middle and then there's another one of those yellow things and the zip tie over in the other end. So this should be rather well attached. And the two straps at the ends should keep it rather safely rolled up. I wouldn't want this to go flying out behind me like some kind of superhero cape. And yeah, this again is it's not going to come one-handed, but uh, you get the idea. You just roll it up, up and above. How well it's going to handle like heavy rainfall if it's just going to collapse down the middle is a uh, question for the future. Oh shit, 9 minutes 30 seconds, better move on. Uh, so, moving on, I'm making a charge adapter for this particular camera. And this is how I normally make them. This is a plug from one of those uh, universal plug packs you can get. We've got millions of these uh, left over at work, so I just solder some of these onto them, cut these, some hot glue on that, and you have a nice 90 degree connector, which fits perfectly. And this camera without causing a fire. So now I just need to make uh, one more for this guy, which is going to go to 12 volts. This is my universal battery charger, uh, which uh, sadly has the same exact plug as my camera. So I am definitely going to, at some stage, put this 12 volt plug into my 5 volt camera. But that's a problem for another time. There we go. Identical plug made for the 12 volt charger. Let's see if it works. So uh, drawing 20 milliamps just sitting idle. Let's throw a cell in there. And it seems to be charging. I never run this charger for DC before actually. But it's looking quite fine. Ah, there we go. Two charging cables. Thankfully at least these are different colours. I usually use a bit more hot glue than this, uh, but uh, for the time being, that's all that I've got, so I need to be a bit conservative. 
Uh, Owen, if you're wondering where I get all of these uh, DC leads, uh, a few years ago, a local ISP threw out all of their cable modems because they were moving out of the field. So I got about a hundred of uh, DC power supplies. These were like two amp power supplies, so they have a rather thick 20 gauge leads on them. So I have tons and tons and tons of these. I just uh, go to the back room and snip another power supply whenever I need one. And while we're mass producing camera AZ adapters, I cut the cord for this evil, evil Canon branded thing, uh, which is a Soul 5 volt output wall wart with a fixed connector going to this utterly, utterly evil contraption of a camera charger lead, uh, which is required to charge your battery since you don't actually get a charge with with my cheapo Canon, and I've mounted the other end to a USB plug. Nothing to it. All, the, all that's going through this lead is 5 volts. There's no reason Canon couldn't have just chosen to use a DC plug and USB lead like Panasonic did, but nope, they had to do the evil proprietary adapter which goes hardwired into the power brick. This is evil. Pure evil. But now it's remedied. This is much nicer. I've now been messing with the uh, camera position, I guess. Uh, so since I'm not doing time lapse for this year, uh, I'm going to make my video camera here, which I was going to do last year, but since the tripod I made on that piece of crap broke, I never had the opportunity. So I got this set up rather well, I think. I've got the... Uh, tripod just uh, sitting with a seat belt around it, uh, seat shoved fully forward, fully uh, vertical, and uh, we do get a pretty level head on this. Uh, this is still a cheap ass tripod, so uh, I'm not expecting any uh, maneuverability miracles out of that, but let's just uh, give you guys a go. So I don't see what I'm doing now, but uh, that should give you a decent idea of what you can see and it pretty much covers uh, the area uh, a normal passenger in the vehicle would see as well so I'm not I think it's not too bad really and for real vlogging you can of course look at me over there how lovely but for the most part I think you're gonna be looking pretty much over there at stuff passing by I've also set up a much better power distribution system than I had last year. So this is just a USB hub which is going uh, all the way to the back and uh, it's going to a little USB power supply which I've mounted very shortly there and that's the cable going to the USB hub and uh, that's going to the QDSCC uh, where it's on switch number five here, so it's running on solar power. Uh, last year I had the power for the front USBs going through this server, uh, but uh, this is just so energy inefficient, it's running about 16 watts when it's just sitting, uh, so I want to be able to turn this off without losing power to the front, and of course a little tiny page block like that is going to be using way less power just sitting around. Uh, I, of course, want to have this server because uh, uh, that means I can just run an external hard drive with all my music and stuff on it and stream music to the front seat without having to constantly uh, swap over music on my USB stick. I'll just be riding with the laptop in the passenger seat. Well, I'll have to try anyway. Oh yeah, we do get. That's a pretty sweet laptop spot right there. So no worries at all. Uh, something real fancy too is uh, for the first time ever I've purchased a cheapo uh, phone mate and uh, this cord is actually going to the USB hub under all this stuff there. There, there you can see it and uh, it's powered by solar power so my GPS has power 24-7 which means it's not going to forget its satellites all the time. So there you go leaving in like two days.